Good okay. morning. Hi, Gloria. So it's well, I can't see you, but it's I'm happy you're here. Oh, I'm happy to be here. It's been a long time. Hi, everybody. It has. It's good to hear your voice. So um hi, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um we are at Amps Amps Your Org um, workshop with Janita Robinson on amplifying your consultant relationship. Um, and she really took it a step further to um, understand this as a true and equitable partnership. And so I'm really excited for the information that she has to share with us because it's going to be really helpful in just how to bridge um, that relationship and strengthen it. So um, I'm Yaz. We also have Bubble from Amps. And to share a little bit about Amps, we are um, a nonprofit capacity building um, organization we support um, and try to uplift black and brown expertise. Um, and so Bobo, you can go on to the next slide. We are all about making sure that, um, oh, I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself. Uh, <laughs> you can go to the next slide, Bobo, too. So um, yeah, so we're all about supporting black and brown expertise, making sure that we can create workshops that bring tools and resources um, that are anti-racist. Um, and so our mission is we really just want to see our black and brown communities thriving. Um, so part of that is creating workshops like these and programs that um, have an anti-racist approach. Um, that way we can support our nonprofit partners in um, dismantling the white supremacist, um, uh, this white supremacist and capitalist values that are embedded, um, that we know are embedded in the nonprofit um, industry. And so um, our work is really centered around that. And so we're really excited um, to just be able to support in that capacity. So in this next slide, I can go into a little bit about who we support. Um, we're really intentional about making sure that we can support um, specifically Black and Latina-led nonprofits. We know that on the South and West sides, um, um, which is a lot of times coded for um, Black and Latina communities, right? Like these are the areas that are often um, doing the most, especially with organizations that have a budget less than $2 million, organizations that are doing the most with the least amount of resources. Um, and so that's why we're intentional about partnering specifically with these um, types of organizations. We want to amplify the work that you do. If you fit these descriptions, we want to prioritize a relationship with you. So I love that you came to this workshop. Hopefully we can continue seeing, um, seeing you at our spaces. And um, yeah, I'm really excited that um, we're going to meet with Janita today. Um, so she can go ahead and introduce herself. And before that, real quick, I just want to let everybody know, like, feel free to come on camera with us. Um, we are an intimate group today. So that makes it really exciting because we're going to be able to get more into the nitty gritty of things. Um, but if you have questions that come up, Go ahead and um, utilize the chat. Bobo and I will be um, making sure that we're keeping up with the chat. And if there's a question that you know seems immediate, we'll try to answer it in the moment. And if not, we will um, work to address it towards the end. So thank you so much for being here. And then Janita, um, it's all on you. Thanks so much, Yaz and Bobo. I'm so excited to be here today. I love working with AMP. I really... Um, appreciate their vision and mission um, and all that they're trying to do in the community. Um, I just want to reiterate what Yaz yeah, said about please make yourself comfortable. I have water. Um, Yaz has tea. Please have your beverage of choice or snack um, and don't feel uncomfortable about whether you're drinking or eating on, cam on camera. Like just do what you need to do to be comfortable for our time together. Um, so good morning. Um, so glad you could join us um, this morning on um, this kind of rainy day here in Chicago, although you may be somewhere different. Um, so I am a consultant, uh, but I was originally a lawyer by training, um, worked in the private sector and a little bit in law school working in a juvenile justice clinic, so defending kids charged with criminal offenses. Um, I've worked at the Chicago Public Schools. I've also, I led a nonprofit for seven years. So I've been in the space that you all are in right now. It was a smaller nonprofit with a budget um, within the AMP parameters. Um, but oftentimes in my life, I've seen kind of both sides. And I, I mean that not just professionally, but personally. So professionally, right, I've been 
an executive director, but I've also served on a number of nonprofit boards. There's somebody in the webinar today who I currently serve on a board with. Um, I have worked with clients as a consultant, but I've also had to hire clients or consultants and assist um, my clients in hiring other consultants. I've done grant making and I've also been a grant seeker. Um, and I uh, and I'll just share personally, you know, it's interesting because so I was born on the South Side. I was born in Inglewood um, and my grandmother lived there until she passed away in 2002. And I spent a lot of summers there, weekends, because my mom was a single parent most of my life. But I also um, at seven moved to DuPage County, um, which uh, right, very different from Inglewood. And so went to public schools in the suburbs um, most of my childhood. So I think that kind of led into the like understanding kind of different paths and different ways of life and recognizing that um, that there are differences um, and being cognizant of it. Next slide, please, Bobo. Um, so the work that I do, I do work around board training, leadership development, um, nonprofit partnerships and strategic planning. Um, but who I am is I'm just somebody who likes to learn a lot and likes to explore new places um, and new ways of life. Uh, and although I may be speaking a lot during this webinar, um, I'm hoping to also learn from all of you. Next slide, please. So we'd love for all of you to introduce yourselves. Um, I think we're a small enough group where we can have people um, do it individually, um, do names, pronouns, title and organization. And um, a short answer on when you need the answer to a question, who, what organization or entity or what website do you trust to answer or guide you to your answer? So. Um, Janita Robinson, she, her, GCR Consulting. Um, and I think for me, there are a couple of other consultants um, who I really rely on to guide me oftentimes with my business. Um, one being my good friend, Connie, who I went to high school with, and um, another being my friend, uh, Carol, um, who does marketing. Um, so those are people that I kind of trust when I need to sort of gut check a uh, question with somebody else. Um, yes, I don't know if we're going to have people do live. Do you want to call on people or have people pass the baton? Yeah, I think um, we can pass the baton. That'd be great. Um, and uh, thank you for kicking it off. Janita, I put the questions in the chat as well since we stopped the screen share so that um, folks know uh, what we're answering. Um, well, I'm going to pass the baton to Roxana. Uh, I'll unmute. Um, uh, so my name is Roxana Espos, and my pronouns are she, her, and I'm doing uh, consultant work over at uh, the University of Illinois at Chicago, the Social Justice Initiative. Um, and um, I guess I, when I need answers to a question, um, it, I guess it kind of varies uh, depending on what the what the question is. Um, sometimes I'm seeking out uh, particular websites that are um, specific to like event work, if that's what I'm working on. Um, if I'm just like general like expertise, sometimes Reddit is actually surprisingly good. They have so many different communities. Uh, I've actually been able to like, um, cause I don't trust Google anymore. Um, it's just all ads. So, um, there are lots of really great communities that are super helpful on Reddit, um, that have been really great, uh, for getting advice or just double checking information. Um, and, um, so, uh, if I'm just using just general websites, I tend to check those. Um, but generally I have built up a, a fairly good community of uh, other folks that I can just check in with and say, hey, have you ever worked with this company before? Or do you have any insight on uh, on this situation? And and those are those are the folks that I tend to seek out. So you want to pass it to Roxana? Um, I guess let's see. Um, Gloria, since you're right next to me on the screen. <laughs> 
Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Gloria Dotson Lewis, um, pronouns she, her, and um, I am the founder and executive director of an organ uh, organization called Distinctively Me. We provide um, brave spaces, safe spaces for adolescent um, Black girls to support them with um, just, you know, their development, but also their mental well-being. Um, we do that through creativity, uh, education, and conversation. And um, lately, I've been uh, leaning a lot on um, the AMPT um, ED uh, thread that we have for um, for executive directors. So just being in a, a group of people who are doing this work, you get so much great feedback on like recommendations for different things. People are very open to um, providing you with templates if you need it and things of that sort. Um, and so I lean on them a lot. Um, and then I have a network of uh, other people that I use. I work for another organization that is doing amazing work for boys. And so um, leaning on people in, in that regard as well. Right. And I... What were you going to say something? Oh, are you going to pass it to? That's all. Oh, I'm going to pass it to Karen. Good morning, everybody. Karen Abrams here. She, her, hers. Um, and let's see. Um, my I've got a couple of titles I can talk about here. Um, I'm a board member, a longtime board member, founding board member of a Omaha organization. I'm I'm a recent import from Omaha to Chicago. Um, that organization is Movement in Omaha for Racial Equity. Um, and then I've also um, been the executive director of three emerging nonprofits. Um, and I am currently a consultant doing some training in technical assistance and substance abuse prevention, strategic planning. Uh, so come to this <laughs> with a a variety of um, interests and career paths. Um, so yeah, I think that I also tend to lean into my um, esteemed colleagues um, for the most part when I'm looking for information and help and um, assistance and answers. Um, so other, other people who've been um, that I sort of know and are very friendly colleagues, um, either in the nonprofit sector or uh, in the consulting realm. Um, and then um, I'm a avid researcher, so I'm always finding new organizations and, and new websites, and that's how I found AMPT. So I'm AMPT <laughs> to be here this morning. Thank you all. And Karen, who are you going to pass it to? Sorry about that. Oops, uh, Robert, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Would you like to introduce yourself? They're they're doing um, a sort of a round robin with name, pronouns, title, when you need an answer to a question, uh, what organization, entity, or person do you turn to? Hi, my name is Robert Harris. I'm uh, from Canada. <clears throat> I'm a correctional officer, but I'm moving in towards being a facilitator for and uh, train the trainer instructor. I'm planning to start my own organization. Um, yeah, that's pretty much most of it. Seems like Robert may not be able to stay off me for very long. Let's pass it to Kiara. Hi everyone. Can you see me? Hey, happy Tuesday. Um, I'm Kiara. She her pronouns. Uh, I am an independent contractor. I've been independent contracting for two years now. Um, and I'm considering how do I make it a consultancy? So I'm like working backwards, <laughs> doing a lot of listening. Um, and then uh, sorry, the chat moved up, so I had to scroll up. Uh, when I need an answer. So question, who do I, I go to the management center a lot. Um, I utilize them. My parents, I utilize my parents. I utilize a lot of the stuff I did in grad school, like PDS I refer to. 
I'm gonna look at DePaul. And so like the Eagan Center and asset based community development is super important. Um and I just need to like a lot of those tools and resources that I cited. Um yeah. Uh, oh, and Miriam, like as a person, Miriam Cobra, I think that she does amazing work. Um, and I refer to her a lot also. Um, and I will pass it to um, Bettina. Good morning, everyone. Hi, Kiara. Nice to see you again. Um, I work with Roxana at SJI, the Social Justice Initiative at the University of Illinois at Chicago. Um, and I also know of AMPT because of Liberation Library. So it's a book, it's a fiscally sponsored books to kids in prison project in Illinois. Um, we're also expanding programming and everything. So we have contractors actually, um, that I work with, but the way that we got them is the best possible scenario where there they were already people that were interested in our work and we had already close relationships with them. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this uh, training because we're it's in a totally different context. Like uh, the Liberation Library work that I do is unpaid and then the SGI work is my full-time job. And so I'm really looking forward to thinking about contractors in, in that sense with a more of a clear delineated like power and po possible power imbalance. Um, and when I ask or look for help, I tend to lean on um, the social networks and again, not entirely professional networks. They're more like community <laughs> um, networks of people that do things and get, you know, are really motivated to change systems and, and understand that we need other people to do that. So that's why we're in organizations together. So I tend to lean on people that I've worked with before. Thanks y'all. Oh, I'll pass it to Andrea, if you're ready. Okay, uh, thanks Bettina. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Andrea Brown Thurston, and I am the CEO and founder of Optimal Learning Solutions, um, which is an equity-centered curriculum design um, firm, and uh, my pronouns are she and her. Um, really glad that I uh, took a chance and joined uh, the conversation this morning. Um, I am primarily doing a lot of my curriculum design work virtually, so it can be a little isolating and lonely. Um, I do love the work of curriculum design, and um, it kind of brings me to the next question around who do I reach out to? Um, I have a colleague, Crystal Wash, and she is um, pretty much in the same situation as me in terms of being a um, um, Black female um, owner of a for-profit business in education. And so we pull each other in on projects as subcontractors, as well as just, um, you know, brainstorm with each other, uh, have created tools and artifacts. And she's really my go-to person on things when I'm stuck um, in terms of like research and, um, places where I could trust to get information from. Um, Ed Trust is a really, really good one. Um, they do a lot of what I would say is kind of like reliable and valid research. And they seem to have a diverse lens and a diverse team um, who is doing like the data collection. So the lens of the research even um, to me um, speaks to a very equitable process. So I, I do enjoy reading a lot of their research briefs. And then um, on LinkedIn, I've been using uh, just a lot of little tips and strategies to try to build a community on there. And so sometimes, you know, I'll go looking for folks um, either to work with, to work for um, on LinkedIn based on different groups and um, communities that I've joined. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you all for taking the time to introduce yourselves. Um, I think, you know, it takes time to do this, but it's so important because I think a big part of the value of AMP is the community. 
And so it's helpful to get to know sort of who's in webinars with us, the work that they do, um, the knowledge that they bring, um, because there are some things that I know, but there's a lot of things that all of you know too, that will be helpful to each other. Um, so let's get the slides back up. So our learning objectives for today, um, these were advertised, right? We're gonna talk about when you might need a consultant and some referral sources, um, identifying some questions that you might wanna ask potential consultants and also questions that you should be prepared to answer. Um, and then talk really about the relationship um, that you should seek to have with your selected consultant. Um, happy to take some questions throughout and then yeah, says you can post them in the chat. She and Boba will be monitoring the chat along the way. Next slide, please. We've gone through our welcome introductions. Um, we're gonna talk about what your consultant related needs are both today and then generally as well. Um, talk about finding consultants, how we screen consultants um, and how consultants screen clients as well. Um, talk about some things that you have to do once you've selected a consultant, because it doesn't stop there um, and managing the ongoing relationship. And then we'll do some recap and final tips um, and some ways to help you stay connected. Next slide, please. Um, so I'm really here, as I said, you know, I've experienced kind of both sides. Um, as a business owner, as somebody running a nonprofit, I've had to seek out consultants on my own, um, particularly like marketing consultants, sometimes lawyers. Um, and then as a consultant, uh, I've even had to help my clients find other consultants um, to do work or put together a list of qualified consultants um, for nonprofits to use as a resource. Um, I also have a self-interest um, in the self-interest um, is more about wanting the process to run smoothly for all consultants and their clients, um, because we're really in this together. I think most of us are doing this work because we want to make an impact. Um, and so if our relationship can, um, relationships can go well, that'll help with the impact we need to make. Um, so why are you here? Um, we're actually gonna jump into pairs um, and breakout rooms. Bobo's and Yaz are gonna set that up. Um, and we're gonna have you spend about eight minutes or so, I think, um, talking to each other, um, answering um, the following questions. Go ahead, Bobo, next slide, please. Um, and Yaz is going to post these in the chat as well, um, or Bobo will. Um, what past or current obstacles have you encountered with looking for, engaging, or working with a consultant? Um, so sharing um, a past story that might kind of lead you to this space today. Um, how did you overcome those obstacles? And what help do you still need? Um, and when you come back, you should plan to share out um, any solutions that you had and what help is still needed. Um, and obviously I'll try to address the what help is still needed um, throughout my the rest of my presentation, but I think it'll be helpful for all of us to hear those solutions. So again, what past or current obstacles have you encountered with looking for engaging or working with a consultant and how did you overcome the obstacles and what help do you still need? Next slide, please. Um, I think that uh, this talks about, um, we're gonna do pairs. Um, it, it's not as important with the pairs that we have a facilitator, but making sure that both of you have time to talk. So somebody should be a timekeeper, somebody should capture some notes, and somebody should be prepared to share out solutions. Next slide, please. Um, so we can take the slides down. Um, so we'll do the pairs and is it, are we doing eight minutes? Yaz yeah, and Bobo, is that right? Yep. Okay. Yep, we got eight minutes. We're ready to open up the breakout rooms. Um, there will be, it will be in pairs and there'll be one group of three. So, um, we'll see you all in eight minutes. Um, and I put the questions in the chat, feel free. I know we all introduced ourselves already. 
um, but feel free to remind each other. Um, but it's a time to connect. So um, see you all in eight minutes. And then, but when you can pause the recording, not the stop button, but the pause one. And, um, you know, we do the, yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you enjoyed your conversation, your pairs. Um, would love to hear from the pairs and the one set of three about some solutions that you all had and any help that's still needed. Um, I will open the floor to whoever wants to come off their mic and go first. Okay, I can go for our um, triad. So uh, myself and Roxana and Karen, we talked about some of the obstacles, um, starting with, you know, question number one, and then it, our conversation kind of bled into two and three as well. But what we started with was just talking about like the need to set expectations for consultants um, and clarifying the roles. And so, um, you know, there's an example of like, okay, we need someone for marketing. Well, what does that really mean for, you know, one person, it can mean this set of things, you know, as social media is taking off now, social media is often a part of it. Do we mean that? Do we mean marketing to different um, partners, you know, clients, participants? Like, what are we really talking about? Um, and then we moved into talking about um, funding and Karen brought that up from her role as an executive director. Like sometimes you want a consultant and you need a consultant but you don't necessarily have the funding that matches what you need. Um, and so it's not necessarily that you're like settling for a consultant that's not good. It's just that if you had additional funding, you know exactly who you would get or how long even the engagement would be. But with limited funding, sometimes you have to make different choices. And um, we talked about, as we were ending the conversation, just, um, what are some other ways? Um, because sometimes when you're a small organization, you just don't have the time and the capacity to manage consultants. So maybe there's a board member that could like volunteer to help assist with even managing consultants. If we're talking about a small organization or even, you know, um, someone who's mostly leading the organization alone as a, a solo um, executive director, that might be a place where board members can lend some support. Thank you, Andrea. One of our peers. I can go. Oh, oh go ahead. Please, Gloria, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, so me and Robert met, and um, for the first question, um, we talked about challenges. Um, Robert's was more around the um, company he works for now and challenges with um, getting approval and clearance to move forward on, on some of the things that um, he feels needs to be done, and as well as budget and challenges um, with, with you know the funding and the budgets. And um, I spoke about challenges being more of, it, it's so many consultants out there and the um, uh, the uh, websites and all the wording sounds amazing. You're like, oh my goodness, this is just what I need. And, and then you get them and it's like, wonk, wonk, like, no, I didn't get much out of that. And you know, as mentioned, like funding is limited. So you don't want to waste money on something that's not going to benefit. Um, so that's a challenge as well. So we talked about um, how to go about like choosing the right people. Um, uh, Robert mentioned like sometimes you have people who have really amazing reputations and, 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 um, and they do amazing work, but they cost a lot of money and, and so funding is a challenge. Um, and so we spoke about like really doing research, but also leaning on referrals from people that we really trust um, to help, you know, get us the right people to work with. Um, 
And he also mentioned um, a tool called My Reviews that I hadn't heard of to go on and kind of look up and see um, if these companies have really good reviews. Um, and then um, some of the things that we need help with, um, he mentioned just the right people, getting the right people on board with him, um, especially going into his own, starting his own organization. And I mentioned that as well. Like I've had challenges with um, inactive board members, like really, that is such a strong foundation that we need. So I felt like consultants in that regard, also business planning, st strategic planning, things of that nature to have that strong foundation in some of the areas and of course funding. So grants and things of that nature. Thank you, Gloria. And that, um, Robert, if you're able to, that my reviews link, if you want to put that in the chat, that would be great. Um, Tina. So Kiara and I chatted a little bit um, and some of the things that came up were things that were already uh, surfaced here in the breakout, in the large room, uh, finding qualified people, uh, negotiating an accurate and appropriate scope of work and communicating that. And then a challenge for me is like figuring out base rates for pay and type of work. Um, and so what, what we've tended to do is just really uh, like Kiara is a Kiara is more of a consultant. Um, so a lot of the ways that Kiara gets work is like through networks. And I just realized for myself, like, yeah, pretty much most of the people that we work with in my unpaid volunteer <laughs> capacity at Liberation Library um, are people that we've already known or came, came, came to us through different networks of trusted folks that we've already worked with. Um, so at least there was some understanding of when we said a certain type of job or expectation that there was a shared understanding, at least with the people giving out the referral. Um, and then I think I, what what I still would love um, support with is like figuring out how to right size a scope of work um, and making sure that we're all on the same page in terms of yeah what we're contracting out and so yeah and then another thing that I'm like curious about too is I noticed that some of the folks that I've approached at least for SJI they will send very large um, proposals and I really appreciate that because then they detail out what they mean um, but I feel like I'm kind of curious in terms of do consultants or these companies build in time to do that? And that's kind of figured into the costs. Like I, it feels like, I don't know, it feels uh, complicated. I'm like, dang, how much time did they put into this? Maybe I shouldn't be that concerned about it. I don't know. <laughs> um, but those are the things I'm thinking on. All right. That, um, that, uh, it, yeah, Bettina, that's a great question. Um, and those proposals can take a lot of time. Um, and I think it's a question of like, if it was tailored to you or if it was something that they kind of had and submitted to you, um, which hopefully you could tell like if it's really tailored to you or if it's something that's sort of stuck. Um, but um, I love all the things that you brought all brought up. I think you had some great resources and ideas for people and some questions that I think we're going to address um, throughout the rest of our time together. Um, so but, but if you could bring the slides back up. Um, so next slide, please. I just want to start with um, first just a little bit of a foundation setting because understanding like the different situations where you might want to use a consultant and you've touched on a lot of these, right? There are oftentimes where you need um, expertise, right? Whether it's marketing, might be around sort of um, anti-racism work, technology, data, somebody mentioned fundraising already. You might need outside perspective, whether that's strategic planning, coaching for yourself or for other folks on your team, um, evaluation work. And I know that the question of capacity has come up. Sometimes consultants are actually there to add capacity through interim staffing for programming operations or fundraising. Um, so these are some of the situations where you might want to bring in a consultant. Um, next slide, please. Where do you find consultants? 
Um, so again, you all have touched on a lot of these, right? Um, I like to think about it as kind of individual referrals, referral sources, and um, and then kind of your Google, LinkedIn searches, right? The individual referrals, that's why I asked the question at the start of who do you trust when you need an answer? Because thinking about, right, your network and who do you trust, other nonprofit colleagues, right? People who have had the need for similar work. Um, but also you can get referrals from other consultants. Like you may have worked with a strategic planning consultant, but you need somebody to do some marketing work or some fundraising work. So we as consultants have usually have a pretty decent network um, and people will come to me and I will often refer them to others that either I've worked with or who work with my clients that I know do good work. Um, sometimes your funders can have referrals too as well of people that they know that do the work. Um, referral sources. Um, so as you might be able to tell already, right? I'm a big fan of AMP. AMP has their um, consultant portal, um, which you can look through and it tells what people have listed as their expertise, but AMP can also help you to um, find folks too. In particular, if you are getting funding for AMP for a partnership project, they'll match you with three consultants to do interviews with before deciding. Um, licenses and certifications. So when you need like specialized, like let's say you need an accountant, right? Then you should be looking at like the Illinois CPA Society, right? Which is a certified public accountant society. If you need a lawyer, which is really just a legal consultant, right? check your local bar association, like the Chicago Bar Association for a referral. Um, you might also um, in certifications, uh, think about like if you are looking for um, an organization that you know is minority business enterprise, right? Owned by a person of color or a women business enterprise or veteran um, enterprise or disabled enterprise, like the city, county and states, all have listing um, organizations that have those certifications. Um, there are also the, an, uh, referral listings um, that people pay to be on. Um, and it may not be transparent to all of you which ones those are, um, but it's always good to ask when you have um, a listing of consultants somewhere to find out how the consultants got on that list. If it's just that they bought a membership or is it that there was some sort of qualification process? Um, and I, and I'll say like AMP, AMP is not charging us consultants to be on their list. Um, Cause that is really, I think inequitable in a lot of ways. And that's not how you want to find your consultants. Um, Google and LinkedIn. Um, I've had people who said that they found me um, in those ways. Um, LinkedIn, I think, especially because you can see if they're connected to people that you know, and then you can um, then rely on the individual referral. Um, when you do Google LinkedIn, though, I think you have to really think about what you're looking for and how you're going to sort of then narrow those results. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. Um, next slide, please. Uh, because we're gonna talk about some ways that you can really narrow the results of like consultants that are referred to you in any of the ways that we've talked about before or through these searches. And we're gonna talk about conversations, requests for qualifications and requests for proposals. Next slide, please. Um, so conversations. So this might come sort of as a surprise to people, but like, I think one of the best ways to really vet consultants is to talk to them. Um, most consultants, uh, that I know myself included, like we will do like a free con consultation with a potential client. We'll do sometimes multiple conversations, trying to help to figure out if there's a good match. Um, and the value to nonprofits in doing these conversations is that you might learn a little bit more about what it is that you need, right? Um, you know, I'll, I'll take uh, um, board work, for example, you know, people will come to me and say like, oh, you know, I really need my board to fundraise. That's a common kind of question or concern. Um, and I'll start asking questions about like, well, 
who's on your board? How do you recruit them? What do they believe their role to be? Is it actually written down? Like what was their orientation and training? Um, how do you periodically retrain them, right? Do they understand their role versus the role of the executive director and the rest of the team? And so whereas you saw it as a simple, like I knew I'd work a fundraise, like I'm trying to understand like, okay, how are you recruiting, orienting and training your board and being clear about their role versus your role? Um, um, so I think it's just really helpful to have conversations um, you know, and you can even think about them almost like interviews at some point in time. And if you have a set of questions, and I'll talk a little bit about questions that you might want to ask um, potential consultants, send the questions in advance. I mean, just like we're trying to, I think a lot of us get into the practice of when we interview job candidates of sending the questions in advance, it's also good with consultants as well. Um, because we really want to give people time to write thoughtful answers. Um, RFQs, request for qualifications. So um, this is often used not necessarily by a single nonprofit, but sometimes it's used for organizations that are coming up with lists of qualified consultants to share with other nonprofits. Um, so I did this, um, I put out an RFQ for Forefront when I led a project called the Mission Sustainability Initiative. And we needed to have a list of consultants who could help nonprofits to explore or implement partnerships. And so we had, um, it was a survey monkey um, that went out and it just asked people about their experience, um, what their expertise was, was it marketing, was it planning, was it partnership implementation, was it finance, technology, HR, to list a past project and to list a reference. And then I and a group of people reviewed all those, checked those references, and then made the determination of who got on that qualified list or not. Um, so this is something, again, like that larger nonprofits may put together for other nonprofits or for use for themselves later on. Um, RFPs, request for proposals. This is my least favorite method of selecting consultants. Um, and uh, I will tell you why. So uh, as nonprofit leaders, right, think about kind of the worst grant application that you might have to respond to. And that's often what becomes something like an RFP for a consultant. Because yes, it will ask for bios and resumes, but it might also ask me for work samples, um, which I get wanting to understand like what I'm capable of delivering, but my work samples are things I've done for other clients. And so they don't really belong for, to me to share with other people. Um, they're, they can be scrubbed potentially, but what I produce for somebody else isn't necessarily what I'm going to produce for you. Um, they uh, might ask for exact fees um, and they might ask you uh, for a signature um, which is, I think, a little weird uh, when you're just trying to screen folks, right? Because an RFP is not a contract. Um, um, I saw one recently um, that asked whether the consultants were in any disputes with any employees, past employees or vendors, um, which I thought was interesting. I get maybe that you're trying to get to sort of an integrity question, but I'm not sure if like that question in the RFP is the best way um, to do it. Um, I will acknowledge right RFPs again are not my favorite. Um, I think that they take a lot of time and I'll talk about, a little bit about that later. Um, and I think it's um, it puts a lot of burden on you as an organization. Um, I also think uh, as you're thinking about the best way to screen for um, consultants is give yourself a time frame because um, it's not going to be that you can find it's give yourself a time frame to decide because um, you could spend a year trying to find the perfect consultant for a particular project and in that year's time you could have done the project next slide please um, 
the, I think uh, with RFPs in particular, I think this is the influence sometimes of government. So I'd mentioned earlier that I worked for the Chicago Public Schools. So when I was at CPS, the rule was if a project was $25,000 or less, you could just find a consultant and do the project. If it was between $25,000 and $75,000, you had to get three scopes of work um, to compare, right? And if it were um, $75,000 or above, you had to issue an RFP, right? So CPS, right, government entity, public money, high amount of scrutiny, um, but also large bureaucracy with an entire department for procurement or finding and contracting with outside vendors. Most nonprofits, especially um, nonprofits in the AMP community, do not have this amount of infrastructure um, and shouldn't be trying to recreate it with RFPs. It just takes a lot of time to do RFPs. Um, and you really need to think about what's the time in on your side then to go through all those responses. If you ask for references, are you gonna be checking all those references? Um, so just being clear on what you really need to kind of make a decision. Um, and then the three scopes, um, it's good to talk to multiple consultants. I think when you get to the point where you're, you have three scopes though, um, unless you've been really, really detailed about what you want, are you comparing anything other than the price at that point in time? Um, and so really think about like, again, like do you need three scopes from three different consultants or do you know which consultant um, has a really good fit with what you want um, and a scope from them. Uh, next slide, please. So I know I've been talking a lot about what not to do, right? Uh, so let's talk about uh, some things that I think it's really positive to do um, and questions that you wanna ask potential consultants, right? I think that these questions will really help you to find consultants that um, are a good fit for your organization, good fit for your project as well. Um, so values, right? Values, I think, is as much about what, not just the terms that people are using, but what do they mean behind it, right? Somebody mentioned earlier, like these websites that consultants have and they say all the right things um, and then being disappointed later. So it's important to think about like, what questions can you ask a potential consultant to really understand? like well, what do they mean when they say equity? What do they mean when they say justice, allyship, anti-racism? Like, are these just terms, again, that they've kind of picked up or um, is there some substance behind it for them? Um, past experience, lessons learned. Yes, ask consultants if they've done similar projects and not just similar projects, but projects with similar organizations of your size, your mission, um, your size in terms of staffing, in terms of budget, um, the uh, geography and demographics that you serve, and any lessons that they learn. Like, are they kind of like, this is my process, this is going to stay in my process no matter what, or like, hey, here's how I've adapted my process based on some past experience that I've had. Um, cultural competency, um, this isn't about uh, finding somebody who understands the exact culture within your organization or within your community, but it's about somebody who can at least recognize that the culture within your organization or community might be different than their culture and thinking about how they're gonna learn about your culture as part of the project. Um, communication. Um, so uh, this is oftentimes a People think about like, how often am I gonna get updated by my consultant, which is helpful, but you also think about like how you wanna be updated. Do you want like a bi-weekly check-in meeting? Do you want like a weekly email update? Would you prefer that if a consultant text you? Um, so I was on the client side once working with a marketing consultant um, who was really great about updating me once a week. Um, but I had to talk to her because I realized like, she kept updating me on Friday and uh, this might be my own pet peeve, but I don't like getting a bunch of emails on Friday. Like I'm trying to like 
clear my inbox and shut things down on Friday. And so I just said to her, I was like, look, I was like, if you want to write it on Friday and send it to me on Monday, that's great. But I don't want to hear from you on Friday. Like, <laughs> um, so just some things to think about. Um, and then uh, project specific questions, uh, you know, with, let's say, strategic planning, ask them what they think about surveys versus focus groups versus individual interviews. Um, board training, you might want to ask them, like, who they believe to be the client. Is it the AD or is it the board or is it both? Um, just some things to think about related to your specific uh, project. And then price range. So um, we're going to talk about this also uh, in screening clients, but it's okay to ask consultant um, what's a price range for a potential project. Now, it may vary depending on how much information you've shared. Like if you just call me up and you're like, hey, how much does it cost for you to do board training? I may tell you like, well, like it literally might range from like $500 to like $30,000, depending on like what it is that I'm doing. Strategic planning, that may range from like $10,000 to $50,000 or even more, depending on what I'm doing. Um, and so you can get a range, in particular when you're talking early on to maybe a bunch of consultants to give yourself a sense, but um, again, the range is going to be wide if you haven't shared a bunch of information about what your needs are. So um, next slide, please. Because let's we're going to talk about how consultants might be screening clients. So, so budget, authority, need, timing. B-A-N-T. Bam. So this um, acronym, I credit uh, a woman by the name of Lindsay Mullen. She's also a consultant with Prosper Strategies. Um, and her husband worked in sales, um, like corporate side. Uh, and uh, she talked to a group of consultants that I had gathered together about this kind of screen. Um, and I think it's really helpful. And so there are things that you all need to think about when you're um, thinking about potential projects with consultants, right? Budget, pretty obvious. Um, you may feel hesitant to share your budget. Um, and I know there was a lot of people saying early on about kind of the limits of funding. But if you're honest with your budget up front, right, it can save you and the consultant a lot of time. Because yes, there are consultants who like, who are pretty well established and like, they will just be like, look, I, we don't do projects for less than X amount. And it's better for you and them to know that if your budget doesn't match that. But a lot of consultants will say like, okay, so your budget is just X. Well, here's what I can do for X, right? Like, here's how I can help you and maybe meet some of your needs. And maybe like next year, you might get some more money and we can come back and do the other part that you want. Um, so I think it's just, it's good to just be transparent about your budget um, because I like to say to people like, look, if you have a $5,000 budget, just tell me because then I won't try to sell you a $50,000 project because um, then you'll be disappointed. I'll be disappointed. And that doesn't help anyone. Um, and there's also um, uh, a woman named uh, Christine Soros. She's based in New York. Uh, she wrote an article um, and Yasser Bobo can put it in the link and it's about why hourly rates suck um, <laughs> or they're bad for everyone, I guess. Um, is the exact title, uh, and I won't go into the details here, but it just talks about how um, if you get too caught up in hourly rates versus overall budget, then it can be a real mismatch in the conversation and disconnect um, because, you know, she talks about like, you might say like, oh, we can pay $50 an hour, and she'll be like, well, my hourly rate is $250 an hour, and then like kind of where are you? But if you say, oh, but my budget is seven thousand dollars she's like oh well that's great because here's what we can do in that time because the reason why somebody might charge 250 dollars an hour is because they have a lot of expertise they're also really fast and efficient because they've done the work for many years and it takes them a lot less time to do this work than you might be able to do it internally um so that's budget authority um so 
This is about who within your organization makes the final decision about bringing on a consultant. Um, and I think sometimes EDs can be surprised by this because if you've never brought on a strategic planning consultant, um, it might be the case that you uh, find one and then say to your board, oh, we're gonna do strategic planning. And you might have board members say like, oh, but wait, we wanna choose the consultant. Um, and so it's always good to know internally who ultimately will make the decision. Um, and it is the case that, again, like, uh, I'm not saying, because uh, I've been an idea, I'm not saying um, ask your board for permission to bring in one, but try to clarify the rules early on before you start talking to consultants that, so that you and the consultants don't get surprised um, by your picking someone and then having your board say something different. And similarly, if you have team members and you delegate as an ED to a team member that, um, oh, please go find us a consultant to do some marketing work. Be clear if you're delegating to them to just go find some potential consultants that then you can talk to and approve, or if you're truly delegating the decision to that team member to find the consultant and pick the consultant and then come back to you with a scope of work. So that authority um, is really so important uh, internally so that you don't get um, surprise. And I think um, somebody had mentioned early on about uh, the bureaucracy within their own organization with getting approval and clearance for consultants. And so, again, understanding your own internal process once you selected a consultant is so important. Um, need. So, um, need is really, uh, I ask potential clients sort of like, why do you think you need this project now? It helps me understand your motivation and your ultimate goals that you're trying to achieve with a particular project and then timing. Um, when do you want this project to start? When do you hope for it to end? Um, and this is why it's just important to give yourself enough time to really screen consultants, um, have those conversations so that um, you're not reaching out like, let's say now on September 19th saying, yeah, we need a consultant to do a retreat for us in mid-October. You're not giving yourself time, you're not giving the consultant time, and you're not setting yourself up for success. Um, and then as somebody mentioned early, like think not only about when you want the project to start, but how long the project may take. Because if you're really busy internally, you know, you might be like, oh, we really need this strategic planning project finished by December. And again, like it's September now, do you have the internal staff capacity to do your work related to the strategic planning project between now and December? Does your board have the time to do the meetings that they require between now and December? Um, so that's something I think about in terms of timing. So that's again, bam, budget, authority, need, and timing. These are the questions that I like to ask potential. Um, I'm going to uh, pause and ask Bobo to take the slides down for a second. So I just rattled off a lot of information about where you might find um, consultants, what you might need them for, how you would screen for them, potential questions you might ask, and questions that um, as a consultant uh, might ask you and you need to be prepared to answer. Um, I want to pause and just see if there are any questions here. Hope it's like that, not like that saying, right? It's clear as mud. Is that? <laughs> Hi, this is Karen. I, I have sort of an adjacent question which is about encouraging other organizations to hire the right consultants. Um, and and I don't it, I don't know if you really have space in this 
in this um, training for that, but it's been something that's been on my mind for some time. Um, especially, you know, I love AMP's um, BIPOC. I just saw it in the, in the, uh, your BIPOC consultant portal. Um, and, you know, I wish we had something like that in, in Omaha, uh, because I, I feel like so many times, um, organizations, philanthropies, for example, or other folks who are training either internally or externally are, are finding consultants from other states and bringing them to Nebraska when there are, you know, a, just an absolute wealth of local consultants who could fill those roles, but, you know, somehow they're not elevated um, in people's minds. I, I don't know. That's just something that I think about too. Um. I mean, I appreciate you looking at that part. I mean, yeah, we're lucky here in Chicago that we do have an organization like AMP. And I think, um, I don't know what your network or influence is in Omaha, but, you know, trying to maybe talk to the funding community about, like, how do we lift up BIPOC consultants and local consultants um, and maybe coming up with something like a qualified list, like through an RFQ process. I think that's a great example of where an RFQ would be really helpful. And then if that list could be created and promoted to the local nonprofit community, I think that that might help solve that issue. Gloria, did you have a question? No, I was just gonna say that uh, this information that you're sharing is definitely beneficial um, for me. And it, cause I know at one point I was thinking like, okay, if, if I tell them my budget, then they gonna try to use all, you know? <laughs> so, but I think you explaining it in a way that like, let's not waste time. This is what I get. What can you give me for this amount? Really kind of help me look at it a different way. I, I know it can be scary, Gloria. And it's, and it kind of goes back to like human nature right? One of the things we're most uncomfortable talking about is money, but we have to be transparent about our budget. In some ways, like that there's been a really great movement about when you post jobs, salary transparency. Like if you're just upfront about these things, it really just saves a lot of time. Very good point. Um, so we wanted to actually ask you all um, a question and I think we'll have people maybe post it, the responses in the chat, um, but it's where have you successfully found consultants in the past and for what type of projects? Um, so I encourage people to take a minute or so um, to post that in the chat. And I included a question in the chat too. Um, but yeah, take a couple of minutes to pop your answers in there. I know some of you shared some of this orally, but it'll be, it's nice if it's in the chat because it also gives people an opportunity at the end of the session, they can save the chat if they'd like. No one. Oh, Taproot Foundation references. Okay. Taproot um, provides pro bono or in kind consultants. I'm going to actually talk about that a little bit before we end. Well, it's open for folks to share um, uh, between now and the next 15 minutes before we close out. Um, but I wanted to talk about a couple more things in our final minutes. Um, oh, if you could put the slides back up, please. Two slides now, one more. Great, thank you. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk about um, final considerations, some uh, special situations, and then uh, closed out. So once you found uh, your one consultant, uh, that's when I recommend that you check references. I know this can be controversial. Um, you know, I, 
harken back to what I said about RFPs, like RFPs where you're asking like for three references from everybody who submits something to you. If you get 20 submissions, are you checking 60 references, right? And is that a really good use of your time? Is that a good use of the capital, um, relationship capital for the consultant to be constantly asking for their references for RFPs that they're submitting? Or is it once you really decided that this consultant is a good fit for your project, that that's the time to check references. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, I was trained as a lawyer and worked in the private sector. Um, I, don't, I don't know if this is still the case. When you were transferring from law firm to law firm, the general rule was you didn't turn over references until you had an offer just pending the outcome of good references because you couldn't really tell your current firm that you were, or anybody that you were, for, that you were looking for a job until you actually pretty much had the job pending references. Um, not like a completely equal situation, but I think just sort of thinking about like, when do you need references? Um, the timeline. So, you know, I talked about giving yourself time to find a consultant and I talked a little bit about making sure you give yourself enough time for the project. And once you've found the right consultant, really work together to come up with a reasonable timeline. Do not give in to that false sense of urgency of like, especially around the calendar, like not everything has to be completed by December 31st, not everything has to be completed by June 30th if that's the end of your fiscal year, right? Really think about how much time you need. And in particular, I've mentioned strategic planning projects a bit, like those really do take time and they take time for your internal staff, they take time for your board and you wanna make sure that it's a thoughtful process and not a process that people are resenting in any way um, in terms of uh, the time that it takes. Um, and even something that may seem simple to you, you know, I mentioned board training. Um, yes, if somebody gave me two weeks notice, could I, I do like a board training workshop? Yes, but it would be something canned and not tailored to the organization. What I really would prefer to do is trying to do something that's tailored to the organization and do some interviews of the board members before I finished designing something. And that's a two to three month process. And so just think about those time, the time that those things take. Um, payment terms. Um, so we talked about budget, um, but you can also, um, besides like your budget, like you don't have to pay everything up front to the consultant. Like I have a client who like has paid me like by the month for a multi-month project because that's how their cash flow worked best. And that's fine, right? I have some clients who like pay me half up front and then half at the end. Um, these things are all negotiable, right? Um, and speaking of negotiations, right? You need a contract. Even if it's a short term one day project, even if it's something that's like a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars, you need a contract. Um, and I highly recommend um, reaching out if you don't have an attorney to Pro Bono Works, which is part of the Chicago Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under the Law, because um, they help match nonprofits with pro bono attorneys. Um, or if you're an arts organization, Lawyers for the Creative Arts does the same thing. Um, but yeah, have an attorney, have a contract. Um, the consultant may have a standard contract. Um, if you do do an RFP, again, hope it after this you don't, the RFP is not the contract. The scope and the proposal is not the contract. Contract's the contract. Um, working together, um, just keep in mind, right? You're the client. Be clear about your needs and ask for what you need. Um, you know, I have mentioned already kind of communications and thinking about like how often you want to be updated and in what way you want to be updated. Um, and just be cognizant of the power dynamics in this situation, right? And make sure that you engage in mutual respect, right? Treat the consultant how you would want a funder to treat you or how if you were an employee, how you would want your supervisor to treat you, right? Just acknowledge that power differential. Um, communicate with them, pay them on time. Hopefully it's something that does need to be said, but I'm just gonna say it just in case, right? Um, just really, again, be cognizant of the power differential when you're working with consultants and treat them with respect. Um, next slide, please. Um, so a couple situations that I think bear 
a little bit of time on their own. Um, so lawyers, uh, which again are kind of like legal consultants, right? Um, when you're working with lawyers, um, yes, they have expertise that you do not have. There's no question about that. That's why you're hiring a lawyer. But you are the expert about your values, your goals, and your organization. So it's really important when working with lawyers to be clear on what your desired outcome is um, because lawyers are about trying to avoid risk. And so let's say you're trying to working with a lawyer help negotiate a contract of some sort. Like you can be clear with the lawyer, like your desire is to get to a signed contract and help the lawyer to help you avoid any risk around signing that contract. Um, and I think too with lawyers, it's okay to, and this is true with a lot of consultants too, like to go in conversations not knowing exactly what it is that you need, because again, as experts on some things, we can help you to figure it out. Um, pro bono or in-kind consultants. So somebody mentioned Taproot as a resource. Um, there are situations where your funder might pay for a project. There are situations where you might get pro bono consulting work, um, which is great, right? Because um, budget has come up a lot in terms of limited funds. The thing I just want everybody to keep in mind um, with pro bono and in-kind consultants is you're still the client, right? You can still be thoughtful about what you need um, and be clear about what you need um, and also uh, making sure that you have a contract. I was talking to um, a nonprofit leader uh, that I coach earlier this week and um, a consultant that he worked with, unfortunately, and I made a mistake um, and it was like a $30,000 mistake. Um, and this was uh, consulting services that he got, um, not completely free, but discounted at a foundation and paid for half of it. And I said to him, I was like, look, I was like, you need to go back to them. I was like, and you know, it was not being harsh, but this is just about setting expectations about being clear that how big of a mistake that cost you, like what the financial impact was and making sure that they are gonna put processes in place so that they don't make a mistake of that size again, because free or discounted, you're still the client and you are still deserving of quality work and time. Next slide, please. So uh, some of this a bit of a repeat, I've said it, but I'm just gonna emphasize it, right? You're the client, just always keep that in mind. Communicate your needs to the consultant, Never, like, you should be building a trusting, thoughtful relationship, and part of that is just ongoing communication. Um, be transparent as to any potential obstacles. So um, this one uh, can be a little sensitive, but again, like, if you're going to build a trusting relationship, tell your consultant if, like, there were recalcitrant or troubled board members who maybe won't show up or will show up and try to shift the conversation away from whatever it is you're talking about. Talk about if there are staff members who maybe are not gonna contribute as much as you would like them to. And also be honest about, again, like your own time and capacity. Um, you know, I've had clients tell me like, you're gonna need to nudge me and that's okay. And that's fine. Cause I know that going in versus like, my sending emails out or calling me like, why aren't they responding? Like, <laughs> um, so just be transparent about your obstacles and treat your consultant how you wanna be treated. Again, this is about an equitable and mutual relationship um, and not something that's transactional um, and being cognizant of the power differential. Next slide, please. So um, just summing up, right? Again, a big fan of AMP, one of your best sources for referrals. Um, other nonprofit leaders, right? Remember to save the chat um, where people put in some suggestions. People talked about nonprofit leader listers that they were on, right? Whatever your network is, that's a great source of referrals. Other consultants, right? Consultants who you've worked with who maybe don't do the type of project that you're looking to do, but they probably know some folks in their network. And just be aware again of sort of pay to play resources, like where you see listings of consultants. If it doesn't say kind of how folks ended up on that list, just never help 
um, hesitate to ask so that you know if it's that people had to buy a membership in order to get listed, because again, that's not equitable. Um, again, the um, article that I mentioned, our early rates are the worst. I think Yazerba yeah, will already put the link in the chat. It's pretty funny and it's short. Um, it's only a few minutes to read it, um, but I think you'll get a kick out of it. Um, and just again, like, uh, don't underestimate the value of plenary conversations with a bunch of consultants before you decide in ongoing communications. Uh, next slide, please, I think. Definitely stay in touch. So I've got a individual LinkedIn, my company, GCR Consulting has a LinkedIn page. Please feel free to follow us. Um, you can contact me through my website. Uh, um, also, I'll put my, um, uh, uh, you guys can share my email afterwards to so all the registrations. I'm not gonna put it in the chat now. And then uh, you can uh, find me on Instagram, but not super active on Instagram. Next slide, please. And then um, I know, Yaz, you wanted to uh, talk about upcoming program and staying in touch with the AMP. I just, are there any final questions from folks? I didn't have a question, but I did want to say uh, thank you for uh, this information. It's very, very um, thorough and thought provoking. And um, even from a perspective of someone who works with nonprofits, this really, really gave me a good sense of um, what um, I should be looking for and what, you know, the nonprofit should be looking for and how we can come together really with the ultimate um, goal being to find the best solution um, for them and making sure that they've selected the right consultant, even if that's not me. So I do appreciate um, you having both of those perspectives and sharing with us from your experience. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Andrea, for that. And I know Yaz has put a link in the chat for a survey for feedback as well. But yes, I will turn it over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, Janita. Like really, really great um, resources and insight that you provided in the space. Um, I can tell that folks really got a lot out of it in terms of like, even just the connections that folks were able to make today. So I also appreciate everyone for attending and for being present and engaging um, and connecting with each other. So um, this is part of our Amps Up Your Org workshops. Um, I put the link for the survey um, for this session. So please um, take three minutes to let us know your thoughts. Um, I also asked what other workshops you'd like to see from Amps in the future. So um, really valuable um, for us, you know, these responses that you submit. I also put a link for, um, I'm putting a link for Janita's office hour that is happening next week. This is an opportunity to reconnect um, and also get a little bit of more one-on-one -on -one attention or support. Maybe there is like, maybe you want to set your agenda for, you know, a meeting with a consultant. Maybe you want to start that um, search. You can come with these specific questions and we'll have an hour with Janita where um, she will be able to provide a little bit more expertise and insight and knowledge around that, but also another opportunity to connect with others as well. And then we have our um, two upcoming workshops as part of this Anthropy Org workshop that AMP offers, um, one around volunteer management that is um, coming up next in October and then um, one around grants cultivation that's coming up in November. So um, I'm including in the chat um, uh, links for you all to check out these and other AMP workshops, opportunities and resources. We really hope you can stay connected and hope to see you um, at the next one as well. But thank you again, everybody so much. Janita, really appreciate you. Um, and then we'll be following up with an email with, to everybody who attended, um, sharing some additional resources from this session. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Thank Have you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care.
Awesome. And then we could stop the recording. <laughs>